Alpha India VK five Z A I calling and listening. You got a copy, uh, Barbara? NA1SS, NA1SS, this is VK5, Zulu Alpha India, calling NA1SS on schedule, uh, do you copy, Barbara? Again, uh, this is an attempt, a second attempt uh, by ham radio operators in Australia to contact Barbara Morgan. Alpha 1, Sierra Sierra, we are ready for the questions. Thanks, Barbara, very good morning uh, from Australia, uh, Tony uh, here. Uh, I have a McCall Donnelly School in Idaho uh, waiting to speak to you. And if you can stand by, I'll ask Brian to ask the first question. Uh, Brian, go ahead, please. This is Brian. This is the Alpha India. You are coming in uh, very, very staticky. I have the squelch turned down. Can you turn up your uh, your volume, please? This is Brian. How uh, many years have you trained to become an astronaut? Over. Uh, did you copy that, uh, Barbara? Could you please repeat the question one more time? Over. Uh, go this ahead again, Brian. How many years did you train to become an astronaut? Over. Hi, Brian. Well, I started my training here. I've been involved with NASA for over 20 years, but I started my training uh, as an astronaut about nine years ago when I, my last class of students at McCall, they were third graders at the time, and they finished third grade, I finished that third grade year, and then um, when they graduated from high school, just this past year, so it's been that long of a time. And it's all been a lot of fun, just like teaching. This is Weston. How did your body feel during the launch? Over. During the launch, your body feels, uh, first of all, there's just a lot of shaking going on. You don't feel a lot at first, and then the G-forces get more and more. Um, and finally, at the very end, when you get about three Gs, it gets pretty tough to breathe. So you feel like somebody's kind of standing on your chest. Over. This is Tristan. What is your main duty on the mission? Over. Well, Tristan, we have of duties are the whole crew what we are doing is helping to finish the build the international space station so we had several large pieces of equipment that we put on the station using the robotic arm and using our uh, spacewalkers and one of my jobs and the one i think i like the best is being the robotic arm operator we also have about 150 bags worth of stuff that um, equipment and everything that the ground that the that our station crew needs, and we've been transferring that back and forth, and that's what we've been really busy with lately. Over. This is Aaron. What do you do in your free time? Over. Well, Aaron, it's my free time right now, and guess what I get to do? I get to talk with all of you guys on the ground in McCall, Idaho, from the International Space Station using the ham radio. So this is one of the things we do with our free time although we don't have very much free time. The other thing I've tried to do is get uh, sneaks out the window to take a look at Earth below and the sky above. Over. Mm. This is Shane. Is it hard to eat in microgravity? Over. Shane, it's not hard to eat in microgravity. It's pretty easy. In fact, it's pretty fun because you can even play with your food. Uh, for example, you can, my crewmate right here has a, uh, his food just floating in midair and he's uh, reaching for it with his uh, tongue. And also he's playing with the can and spinning it around. Um, at first it was hard to get the food to actually go down when you swallowed it. It felt like it stayed up near your throat and that lasted for two or three days, but then that went away. Over. This is Emma. Is there anything that looks like it's moving on Earth? Over. Emma, last night I was looking out the window and I was looking down at the Indian Ocean and there were big lightning storms all over the Indian Ocean and that's what I could see moving was the um, lightning flashes. As far as anything else moving, since we are traveling faster than the Earth is spinning, it looks like the clouds are moving underneath us, but it's really us moving over the top of the clouds. Over. 
This is Lindsay. How do you sleep in space? Over. You actually sleep very soundly in space. We have a uh, kind of a, we call it a sleep restraint. It's kind of like a flimsy sleeping bag that we can zip ourselves into and clip to the wall somewhere so that you don't float around and hit your head on the equipment. But you can really sleep just floating in midair too. And I found that uh, once I shut my eyes, I go to sleep right away and I wake up when the alarm wakes us up about eight hours later. Over. This is Shelby. How do you exercise in, uh, on the space station? Over. Well, Shelby, on the space station we have three different uh, tools for exercising. There's an exercise bicycle, there's a treadmill so that you can run, you strap yourself into it or you strap yourself into the bike. And we also have what we call resistive exercise. It's a lot like lifting weights, only you're pulling on cables or that are attached to these canisters that you pull against. Over. This is Tristan. What is the temperature outside the space station? Over. Did you copy that uh, question, uh, Christians, uh, Barbara? What is the temperature outside the space station? He asked over. 300 degrees hot, and when you're on the nighttime side, it's 300 degrees cold. Over. This is Brianna. What protects the space station from asteroids? Over. Brianna, we have a lot of protection on board the uh, both the shuttle and the station from asteroids. And uh, there are special, special. Uh, actually, they're big metal plates, but they've got kind of a honeycomb structure inside of them. So if that any asteroids hit, they kind of the energy dissipates inside, and they kind of break up into smaller pieces. Over. This is Lindsay. If you had to choose one, would you be an astronaut or a teacher? Over. Well, Lindsay, do I have to choose one, or can I do both, please? <laughs> actually, both are excellent jobs. And they are both very, very similar. Both you're exploring, you're learning, you're discovering, and you're sharing. And the only difference, really, to me, is that as an astronaut, you do that in space, and as a teacher, you get to do that with students. And they're both wonderful jobs. I highly recommend both. Over. Uh, thanks, Barbara. Uh, I'll ask the uh, students and Jim uh, McCall Donnelly uh, to come up with three big cheers for you. Hip hip hooray! Hip hip hooray! Hip hip hooray! Uh, thanks very much, Barbara. Uh, uh, back to you if you copied that over. So sorry that you had to wait for the a whole another orbit as we uh, because we missed that first um, ham pass. But we appreciate your patience and it's, you guys asked fantastic questions. We missed McCall a whole bunch and look forward to coming down. Uh, sometime and uh, answering more questions and sharing this whole experience with you. Over. Good talk, Jim. Hey, thanks a lot, everybody. Uh, thanks very much, Barbara, and uh, uh, very nice to uh, have had the contact with you and uh, a safe return home. This is uh, Tony VK5 ZII in South Australia saying uh, uh, goodbye and thank you. And thank you so much to all of you. Take care and have a great day. Bye. I miss you. Okay, well, ladies and gentlemen, we've shared a moment of history. Amateur radio station VK5ZAI in Australia, operated by Tony Hutchison, contacted Barbara Morgan, KD5VNP, aboard the International Space Station, talking with students at the McCall Donnelly School District in McCall, Idaho, in the USA. And Matt Kyle was the ARIS mentor responsible for helping the school prepare. And Bob Schaefer was the amateur radio coordinator at the school. And now for the international volunteer team of ARIS, including the Radio Amateur Satellite Corporations around the world, the American Radio Relay League, and NASA, this is Will Marchant, amateur radio operator KC6ROL, sending my greetings to all of you in amateur radio terms, 73, which is best wishes. Well, congratulations, Jim, and, uh, and the school. You folks did an outstanding job. Oh, thank you so much, Will. Thanks for your, your hard work and perseverance on this. I'm glad we pulled it off. Excellent. Well, very good. Did you folks have any more um, uh, questions, or are we done with the teleconference? Uh, let me put it to the audience.